अथ गुरु परंपरा वंदना सदाशिव सरंभा नंदीनाथ सुनंदिता तिरुमूलार सिद्धांत तेजोरश्मि प्रकाशिता ऋषि पुनीत मौनाप्त प्रसन्न सन्दनोज्वला Recently I gave a talk at the Maha Kumbha Bishakam for the Enfield Nagabhushani Ambal Temple in London. Since many present at the event were new to Hinduism, I began with a basic introduction to the temple itself. Here is my message. A common impression when visiting a Hindu temple for the first time is that Hinduism has a multiplicity of supreme gods. That conclusion can be a natural assumption given the many shrines and holy images one encounters. However, it is not correct. While Hindus do believe in many divinities, all believe in a one supreme being. A verse from Hinduism's oldest scripture, the Rig Veda, is often quoted to express this idea. In Sanskrit it states, ekam sat Vipra Bahuda Vadanti. And in English it reads, Truth is one. Sages describe it variously. In a Hindu temple, it is not uncommon for the Supreme Being to have more than one shrine. In each of these shrines, God is depicted in a different way, such as male, female, both male and female dancing or teaching. At the Enfield Temple in the main shrine, we encounter the Supreme Being in the form of the goddess Nagabhushani Ambal, following a tradition from Nainativu, an island near Sri Lanka's northern peninsula. In this London temple, the Supreme Being is represented in four other forms as well. Shivalingam, Lord Nataraja, Dakshinamurti, and Bhairava. We might find a parallel in a Christian church where Jesus is worshipped in the cross, in a manger, and with the apostles. Jesus is a one Lord, but with different forms and meanings. Seeing his multiple images, we do not conclude there are multiple Christian lords. In most Hindu temples, some shrines are dedicated to the Hindu equivalent of an archangel in Abrahamic traditions. The Enfield Temple, for example, has erected shrines to Lords Ganesha, Muruga, and Anjaneyar. The divine beings in these shrines are secondary to the main deity, just as archangels such as Saint Michael are secondary to the supreme being in Abrahamic face. Over 50 churches in the greater London area are named Saint Michael's Church. Who is Saint Michael? He is not in fact a saint, but the chief among angels patron of warriors, mariners, and the suffering. Three other archangels, Raphael, Gabriel, and Uriel, are often glorified. London has churches dedicated to both Raphael and Gabriel. Some Jewish traditions recognize as many as ten archangels. These beings, like the Hindu divinities or gods, function as helpers of God, fulfilling specific responsibilities. A Christian or Jew worshipping Saint Michael or Mother Mary is not worshipping a second supreme God. Such worship is to an elevated being who enjoys God's grace. 
Similarly, in a Hindu temple we have a one God, but many blessed and heavenly divinities, helpers of the Creator of all. In understanding the nature of God and divinities in the Hindu temple, there is a third factor to consider. The Hindu religion is not a single, homogenous faith. It is a complex family of faiths that, while similar, are also different one from the other. Most importantly, the three main denominations worship the Supreme Being by a different name. The Saivites God is Shiva, the Vaishnavites God is Vishnu, and Shaktas venerate the Supreme as Shakti. In many temples, especially in the diaspora, these traditions overlap. Thus, in the Enfield Temple, which is of the Saiva denomination, there is a major shrine to Lord Vishnu, the form of the Supreme Being worshipped by Hindus of the Vaishnava denomination. While this presence of seemingly distinct supreme gods can confound outsiders, Hindus know what is being represented and rather enjoy the inclusivity of it all. There are few sharp lines in this elastic, all-embracing family of faiths. At the same time, the strictest of Vaishnavites would not have an image of Shiva in their temple, and their most traditional of Saivites would never allow a Krishna in theirs. One reason for such blending relates to the prominent Smarta Sampradaya, Hinduism's fourth major denomination. This stream of philosophy, culture, and tradition brings together, on personal altars and in public temples, all three major forms of the Supreme Being, Vishnu, Shiva, and Shakti, as well as secondary divinities, especially Ganesha, Surya, and Murugan. In this liberal Hindu school of thought, all are seen as equal reflections of one Saguna Brahman. Any one of them may be elevated to prominence as the supreme being in a temple or shrine. In some temples following this ultra-inclusive pattern, one may even find altars to Jesus, Mother Mary, Muhammad, or Buddha. Another subtlety Hindus enjoy that could confound non-Hindus regards gender. While philosophically God is beyond gender, he, she is commonly represented as male or as female. Hence the goddess is revered not only in Shaktism but in Vaishnavism and Saivism as well, though by different names and personalities. This is the subtle explanation behind the Supreme Being in the Enfield Temple being worshipped in the personage of Nagabhusha on the Ambal, Shakti, surrounded by various forms of Shiva, including Nataraja and Shiva Lingam. Despite the separate shrines, Shakti, Shiva are philosophically understood as one and inseparable. Our second topic is the nature of the ceremony that is performed to give life to a temple. In Sanskrit it is called Kumbhabhishekam, a term sometimes preceded by Maha, meaning great. Kumbhabhishekam is the combination of the two words Kumbha and Abhishekam. Kumbha names a water vessel. Abhishekam is the rite of pouring kumbhas filled with sanctified water over the copper spires, which resemble inverted kumbhas, on the crown of the temple. Kumbha Abhishekam names the formal inauguration of a new temple and its periodic reconsecration, usually at 12-year intervals, following renovation, extensive cleaning, and renewal. The English term for such a ceremony is consecration, meaning to make sacred. For such a blessing to be holy, God's presence must be invoked. At a Mahakumbhabhishekam, this is done through priestly disciplines and sacred fire ceremonies called Homa or Yajna, conducted in a temporary structure called a Yagasala, built just for that purpose. 
Fire is used in many religions in one form or another. In Hinduism, it is believed that fire can be seen in the heavenly inner worlds. By lighting a fire, intoning sacred chants and ringing a bell, you are inviting benevolent inner world beings to come and bless all present. These blessings build in intensity and accumulate over a number of days in their water pots near each sacred fire. On the final day, the water in the pots is poured over the temple spire and bathes the various deities and objects being made sacred. This holy ablution occurs at the high point of the ceremony. It is preceded by days of ceremonies and followed by a month of special daily rituals. Our third topic is the use of statues in Hindu worship. As part of the Kumbhavishekam ceremonies, all the statues that are being installed in the shrines are purified and infused with divine energy. Thereafter, the statue is considered a murti, an image that has been made worthy of worship and in which the deity is present. In other words, the deity uses the image as a physical body through which he, she blesses the devotees present. Thus we can see that Hindus are not worshipping the icon, they are worshipping the holy deity within it. In practice, while many regard the image simply as a symbol for God, for the most devout and mystical, it is God himself or herself. The rituals the priest performs are based squarely on the principle of invocation, beseeching conscious, intelligent, compassionate higher powers in the inner worlds. Hinduism recognizes multiple planes of existence, unseen worlds filled with souls of all stages of evolution. We experience these subtle dimensions of being in our thoughts and emotions all the time. During sleep, we leave the physical world and become fully active in unseen realms. At death, we shed our physical body and reside in the inner planes until we are again born in a physical body. <laughs> 